Champ here. We're back from hiatus. Thank you for your patience. I'm joined by baby champ with me right now who is hiccuping. She's milk drunk. Um, We're just excited to be back. And uh, yeah, I love this episode. We've been sitting on this episode since July, so it might sound a little bit outdated. Um, But this is one of my favorite episodes and we we swear a shit ton. Uh, I'm sorry, mom. Uh, But I hope you guys enjoy. See you guys around. My name is Matthew Champ, and I've got daddy issues. And my name is Chris Kingsbury, and I got daddy issues. And this is Daddy Issues with Champ in Kingsbury. Issues episode three for reals, not episode two, not episode four. It episode is episode three. three. We are on track, motherfucker. Super happy fun time. All right, we need to we need to start this episode off with a warning. We are talking about swearing today. Hey, fucking a. We are going to drop some f bombs. We're gonna drop some s bombs. We're gonna drop some. H E double hockey sticks. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we even dropped the C bomb. Do we? No, I don't think we do. I think we. I think we held it in. I, I think, think we, we held I that think, one in. I think we Rodney in. drops the N bomb though. Well, but we talk about that. We do. We do. Yeah, we, we do. We do. And it's, it's all good, common. Just parental discretion. Uh, listening device. Yeah, like if you're listening to this at work, put some earphones in. NSFW. NSFW. We do have the explicit marker for a reason. But yeah, our our theme today, we're just gonna say right off the top before we like. Do our good old intro. Um, we're talking about swearing around your kids. Does it have an impact on your kids? Do, does, does, does it have it an impact not? on you? It, yeah. Do you? How do you feel about it? Did you get sworn around when you were a kid? Did it, how did it affect you? And uh, I did some cool research. It? Yeah, we'll be um, mentioning that a little bit later on. It then. comes up in the conversation. Uh, look, we're it's a fun conversation. I. I I'm very happy about how it went. This yeah, is like every episode we do feels like it gets a little bit better. Absolutely. I definitely feel that we are moving uh, forward in significant yeah. gains. And like I'd like to thank our listeners so far. Like we've had a lot of great listeners. We've gotten some actual some feedback where people have emailed us in and been like, "Hey, love what you're doing. Here's some suggestions." So we're taking everything uh everything under consideration. A shout out to our listener in Utah. Yes, Utah. Yeah. That- you totally demograph blew my mind right Stay on. Mormon, my friend. Yes. Stay Mormon, my friend. Thank you for uh, listening in, and I uh, hope one day you can make it up to Canada <laughs> and see the splendor that is free health care and legal weed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish I wish I could get it on my phone. Like I have to go through the computer to find out where my where the actual demographics are. But hey, keep sending but, us some emails and some insights, yeah. and uh, you know what? Tell us what you guys are drinking, uh, even if it's not beer, a beer that we should try on air, and just generally, uh, we'd like to hear from you. So uh, send us some emails. We'll have those uh, links and everything towards the end of the show. So, Chris, do you remember what we were drinking when we were meeting with Rodney? We were drinking uh, something from Whippersnapper. Whippersnapper. We've drunk from them before. Yes, we have. And it was their pre-prohibition lager. Yes. Yeah. It was super nice. It was very crisp. Uh, I know I know. normally, uh, if you guys listen at all, hap, uh, Champ loves the hops. And this pre-prohibition lager was not that at all. It was very crisp. It was a light alcohol content and uh, good for Sunday morning mm. drinking. It's almost like a citrusy kind yeah, of feel to it. Yeah, a good finish to it. It's yeah. called it's called the root of all evil. Yeah, that's what um, it is. which is a good name for a podcast. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's totally. It's totally. So the root of all evil uh, is like a nice crisp pre prohibition lager. Bell's Corners. Uh, you can pick it up there. I think you can get it at the LCBOs across the, the province as well. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can, as long as you order it at the LCBO or the beer store, they will get it to you. Absolutely. And uh, now because we're always, it's it's nice to drink early on a Sunday morning. Like it's a good before church drink. That's right. Like, yeah. You're like, oh, I gotta go to church. I need something to take that taste out of my mouth. Well, you know, no, no. Oh, hey, wait, sorry. Well, it'll like warm you up for the blood of Christ. Right. Yeah. Cause that's like always pre- really tart. It's like, pre-drinking. Just... It's pre-drinking for the for the wine. <laughs> yeah, I gotta have one before you. Yeah. We're we're drinking now too. I'm drinking the new Creamore IPA. I love Creamore. Creamore is fantastic, and I love my Creamers. hops. So the Creamers. the IPA is pretty much like Creamore with hops. And uh, I'm drinking uh, Unibroch. Uh, 
Blanche de Chamblay. It's a very, very light uh, style. It's like a white beer. ale. It is a white ale, yeah. It deserves a, a slice of orange. It definitely does. Uh, and in Montreal, a couple weeks back when I was there with the kids, they actually had uh, corks of this in the corner store, <laughs> and it was just the wonderfulest thing in the world for six bucks. I was like, <laughs> yeah, way to go. I, I like Unibrew. Unibrew is good. They've got... Um, they got La Fin du Monde, yep. which is with like 9.8% alcohol, and it tastes like diarrhea. Yeah. Because but, it gives you diarrhea. Yeah, because it gives you diarrhea, but it gets you messed up. Oh, quick. it gets you messed up. Man, it is a malt liquor. They're just disguising it as beer. It's a malt liquor. 100%. Well, they're they're like Belgian-style ales, right? Yeah. So they're they're like they are, triple still Belgian styles. They've got, they've got a double IPA um, called Cheval, I believe, or Blanc Cheval. Yeah. And they sell those in the corks at the LCBO. Nice. Along with their blueberry and their the apple blueberry one. is fucking delicious. The blueberry is good. The apple, not so much. No. Yeah. No. Apple and beer? No. It just sticks to apple. cider. Yeah, it just, just sticks to cider. cider. Just to cider. All right. So you went to Montreal this week with the kids. You took the kids on a family trip. Yes, a family trip to Montreal. And we stayed on the south shore uh, overlooking the new Champlain Bridge. Uh, nice little pool. Nice little... Uh, place there and uh it was part business uh mostly pleasure uh got to have them with some uh really great food and just out in the big city super props to my wife who is borderline agoraphobic and uh she made that trip with the kids and it was fun it was a great time i didn't know she was agoraphobic yeah she's got super problems with crowds and Mm. people and things like that so she'd like she'd feel claustrophobic in the murder room eh not necessarily. I don't think it's claustrophobia. I think it's just she generally hates larger amounts of people and large open spaces in those with those people. We're actually we're gonna have uh, Amanda and Kate uh, both on an episode. We're gonna do a themed episode around mommy groups on Facebook because y'all are fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing some of these things. Oh, man. I don't want to spoil it because that's going to be a great episode. But, yes, there are some issues. Like, we might even start a segment of this podcast called uh, the Mommy Post of the Week. Mommy Post of the Week. If you're going to have a dick of the week, you got to have a Mommy Post of the Week. If you're going to have a dick of the week, you're going to have a Mommy Post of the Week for sure. Yeah, so, so I'm making Chris move a little forward. We're playing around with a new mic new today. New mic today? Yeah. Uh, a blue ball? No, a blue, a blue bell. Yeah. <laughs> and Champ's going to have blue balls long enough here after the, uh, the old... After the baby comes. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, um, so you went off. You went off to Montreal with the family. Uh, I went and saw the Roots with Simon Celine. Nice. And then I went and partied with DJ Questlove. No, really, you didn't I, tell me that. Well, like I went to see DJ Questlove. Like everybody's partying with yeah, DJ. Yeah, it's yeah. not like I was like, hey, DJ Questlove. Uh, that's when I rolled my ankle. Oh. I was like jumping up and down, and then I landed on a beer can, and I went over, and we heard a pop, and I sprained my ankle. Uh, so I've been limping for the past week and a bit. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a heavy limp you got yeah. there. You never uh, now that you're over that thirty curve. Oh things, my god, things uh, settle I, different now. I already talk about my ankles cracking when I walk on stage. Now my ankle like hurts. legitimately <laughs> hurts. <laughs> Hurts and cracks, yeah. But then, uh, then this weekend we went, um, we went and we saw Wu Tang Clan and Snoop, and Snoop Dogg. Dog. <laughs> but, but that was uh, <clears throat> that was an eye opening experience. Um, don't take the kids. Don't know. Don't take the kids. Uh, but there was a lot of kid level people there. Boy, I, uh, it was. A, it was <laughs> Are a, you talking with just jokes? Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just jokes. You is something else, that's for sure. Big rainstorm just before Wu Tang comes out. Simon Celine's holding the umbrella, and this girl comes up and Pause. gets a- We talked about Simon last episode. He's the guy that we went to New York with. We love Simon, but sometimes he's. We, we got more. We'll talk about Simon, well, Simon later. later. More an adventure. He stole a giant umbrella from his work, though. Yeah. So we had it at, at this at this festival, and. Uh, this girl comes in and sits underneath the, the, the umbrella as to not get soaked, and we're being very helpful. And then she says out of nowhere, she's like, yeah, I like Trump. And we were kind of like, what? Are you serious? He's like, what? Why Trump? Yeah, Trump's Trump. I love Trump because he's just jokes. He's just jokes. And then and it says, as it said that, Simon pulled the umbrella away from her and then just kind of like cast her out into the pit and then... <laughs> She's like, what? And we're like, yeah, just jokes. Just jokes. Just jokes. Just jokes. <laughs> it's just like, jokes. Don't like, worry. Like, I don't, I don't. <sighs> Good power on her. And then Champ's like, what da- how old are you, girl? And she's like, oh, I'm like 20. We're like, okay, just need to know the demographics. See ya. Like, <laughs> like, 
Here's the thing, like just jokes. <laughs> just none of what? what he's saying is joking. Not he's not saying he's he, not joking. You know, you know, like he. Oh, Simon's calling, guys. I can't. Um, I'm not going to take this on air. Simon's calling. We'll deal with this in a bit. We'll be right back. <laughs> Pause. All right. So for you, that was no time. Um, for Same. us, that felt like forever. Totally, totally forever. <laughs> like, Simon's got to go see a neurologist. It's let's, let's just jump in. So, so just jokes, girls, gone. And like, it, it, Trump isn't just jokes, right? No, he really He's isn't. fucking saying some of the most racist shit. He's like, I don't have a racist bone in my body. I loved AOC's response to that today. Yeah, it's like, that. no, you're, you're, you don't have any racist bones, but your mind and your heart are very racist. Nice. Yes, right? that's a good one. For sure. Good and, one. and he tries to justify it. Uh, it's not racist because other people believe it too. <laughs> no, no, it just means that crime. other people are racist. racist. Yes. <laughs> oh my now, god. Now it's like a hate group. Uh, <sighs> man, this is why we drink. Yeah, that's why we drink. This is why we drink. So, we brought children into this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, what? Okay. Yeah. So, Simon. He we continue to we continue to rock out to Wu Tang Snoop Dogg. Yeah, my Snoop brother Dogg. my brother in law James is with us. It was we his lost birthday. Him, we found him. We lost him. We found him. The it song was great. the song Amazing Grace is about him. No kidding. And once was lost, now is found. found yes, yeah, and then he was lost again, blind, um, and then now sees. Yeah, well, yeah. no, that that happened too. He just yeah. wandered away. And, yeah, because like he was Snoop Dogg, right? So there was there was some imbibing of of marijuana as people responsibly do. Yes, <laughs> and he just wandered away, and he's like he's like I just. I just walked to another stage. <laughs> like, okay. All right. Well, All right. So glad you made it back. <laughs> Have after, a drink. <laughs> after Snoop Dogg. Just tell them what happened after Snoop Dogg. So after Snoop Dogg, the crowd is like dispersing. We've all met up again. And then uh, we're all walking back towards a certain direction. And then Simon turns off. Literally, like, you know, data. For, I've been thinking about this, like, over the last day a bit here. It, like, when Data has his little off switch and just kind of goes, and freezes and then flops to the ground, that's what Simon did. Star Trek reference. Total Star yeah. Trek reference. We got lots of Star Trek in the murder room. Yeah. So, that he basically, his computer restarted. Yeah. We, th- we thought. We thought. And he was down for about 10 seconds, and we got him up, and he kind of hurt his ankle that time. Uh, it was like he blacked out. And... I've been with Simon when he's drinking before. Simon didn't have enough, too much to drink. And Simon's a, Simon can drink. Yes, he can. Right? So when he went down, I like, at first, we just thought it was like a, a he was just messing around or a trip or a stumble. Yeah. Um, but no, his computer stopped. And I, like, so we got him into a lawn chair and like within moments of getting him into a lawn chair, his body just went 100% rigid, like just... Like a board. Rock hard and not in the sexy way. No. You know? No, um, like in that like uh, rigor mortis way. Yeah, like in the rigor mortis way. And he just started seizing, and then his eyes rolled into the back of his head, and he stopped breathing. And I, he's had a heart attack before. Like, he's... His doctor just found that out. Like, on the phone call, we were just there. We were talking to his doctor, and I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, he's had a heart attack before. And he's like, wait, when? I was like, like nine years ago. And you hear oh. the doctor go, Simon... Why is there so much I don't know no, about you? <laughs> <laughs> From his general practitioner. Yeah. So, like, I'm thinking he's actually going into cardiac arrest, so I'm starting to sternum rub him. I'm, I, I have a lot of first responder training, and I wasn't ready to go into compressions yet because I couldn't find a pulse, but we were also in a very awkward uh, position. So we were removing him into recovery position. Champ was re- rubbing on that and shit like it was a fire. He's yo. bruised. He's bruised up his <laughs> chest, and he says it hurts. And I'm like, good, good, because oh. Champ, he, Champ had some moments after that. Oh, so he's he's gone. He's down there for about two, two and a half minutes. Uh, he comes to just like nothing. What's going on, guys? Why am I down here? <laughs> yeah, what's, what's happening? And, We're like, and I was like, dude, just stay down. He's like, no, no, I'm good. I want to get up. I was like, S- just stay where you are. And then he seized again. And I was getting very emotional. Yeah, so yeah. another paramedic it. stepped in and took over, and I was able to walk away. Um, they lectured him. Simon, Simon had about three or four ciders that night, and the equivalent to about half of a joint. Yeah, about that. And I've been with Simon when he has ingested marijuana before, and he has and not had a, this. That's over yeah. a period of uh, this is over God, a period four of four or more. five hours, right? Yeah. So, like, he's not he's not intoxicated by any means. Uh, and I'm trying to explain this to the EMS. But they're concerned, oh, about the, about the weed, about the weed. And they get us to the ER tent, and the EMS there gives him, like, a 10-minute lecture about smoking marijuana. <sighs> and Simon, being Simon, is like, oh, thank you, officer. I didn't know this. And then <laughs> I'm like, dude, 
<laughs> we oh, talk about man. this all the time. Uh, and then they let us go. They just let him go. They didn't let. They didn't take him to a hospital after having and the fourth episode in the tent, right? Where, no, no. The fourth episode was before the tent. He, by uh, the tent, he was he was walking and he was talking. But the thing is, like, because there was a heart history, I was like, it could be heart. I was like, he had at least four seizures or convulsions. Um, you know. He, he was complaining about his ankle. Yeah, yeah. So, he was complaining about his ankle. Said, rightfully so, because said, uh, the next day he had to go get that yeah. shit checked. I sent him to the hospital the next day and told him, all right, ask about your heart, tell him about the seizures, have him look at your ankle. He doesn't tell them about, about the, the seizures. seizures. <laughs> but he's like, no, why would I tell him about the seizures? Like, you know, they'll take away my license and it's never happened to me before. I was like, fuck, Simon. It's not like you drive for a living. Oh. It's not like your UPS or anything like so, that. I made him go to his family doctor. That was what was happening is him and his family doctor were calling because Simon's like, I don't remember what happened, so I don't know what happened, so I had to walk the family. It was a very traumatizing experience. And you know what? It's It actually, I think it's cool. Well, no, it's not cool that it happened, but the conversations that have come up have been cool. Um, James, my brother-in-law, was there, and uh, uh, his, his son, I hope he's okay with me sharing this, his son has had a number of seizures. Oh, yeah. And, like, you know, you, you very instantly sympathize with someone who's holding someone and then they're having a seizure and like you don't know what to do and you know it becomes very traumatic i I flash back to erica who had erica had femoral seizures right on my birthday erica had seizures on your birthday yeah and like she was just so hot and the poor little girl didn't have any agile to bring her down and her little computer just couldn't didn't know what to do with that much bad stimulus and that much heat so she Shaked and convulsed in my arms, and it, you, like it, it, you feel so useless. Oh, absolutely, one hundred and ten percent. So we, I know that we've spent we spent about ten minutes like building up this story and telling this story, but but ultimately, like I think that a big conversation that we're going to have to have with a guest in the future is around when something traumatic happens to your kid, and you just feel absolutely helpless or useless, or because. You know, it's been something where this is just one of my best friends, and I've had nightmares about it for, like, two nights, right? I haven't been able to sleep. It's affected my eating. It's affected my ability to to work. Maybe that makes me sound like a weaker person, but at the same time, like, it's just, it's trauma is trauma. Trauma is trauma, And we need to, I think that that'll be an important conversation to have. Definitely. We'll have to make that a whole episode. I know I put my parents through an incredible amount of trauma just of my sickness alone. Uh, Some good... 20 minute talking points on just my my medical history yeah I was about to say like we should have an episode where we just talk about your math (laughs) (laughs) math uh, yeah ecstasy uh, the history is long and huge but it started even before that with like me being a little kid and having asthma attacks all the time right so that and pretty much every major holiday I would have a significant asthmatic event Mm -hmm. that would be for another time ah yeah 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 um, guys, we need to, we need to like enter this episode on a on a lighter note. <laughs> <I'm like, laughs> like, fuck I this shit, the, yo. Oh, you know what? Here's the thing, uh, <laughs> Dean McDermott. Let's talk about Douchebag yes. McDermott again. Douchebag McDermott. <laughs> so we uh, we went a little hard at him in our last episode, and you know we wished ill will against him. Uh, and then he was hospitalized for pneumonia. Uh, so we're throwing away the voodoo doll. Uh, yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Hey, I hey think Dean. We- Nothing, we, nothing personal. We really did not. We're not. We're not vindictive against you. We hope you recover. We don't want you to get sick and die. You have children to raise uh, with the woman that you cheated on. <laughs> Remember, you're still you still got to raise them. You're still, you're still a part of that bag. life. You're, you're still a douchebag. Douche douche but you know, but. we don't. We want you to be an alive douchebag. Yes. Yeah. All right. Pneumonia sucks. Dead fathers yeah. bear no relevance to their kids' lives. Exactly. Like, you know, like, leave well, a legacy for those kids to know you for more than cheating on their mother and cheating on the woman before their mother and cheating on the woman before their woman before their mother. Maybe maybe talk about, you know, cheating with them <laughs> while you're still around. Yeah. That'd be cool. Just, just, you know, maybe love their mother more. You know, she when, when you're giving birth, like, I don't know why we celebrate a person on their birthday because really we're just celebrating the fact that you got too big to fit inside of your mother's vagina. Right? Like, <laughs> like that's it. You're just, you are just now too you're done. big. Ding. We're supposed to be, we're still supposed to have another three months of incubation, but our bodies are like, you know what, mom, we're too big. And then your mom has to do all of the work. So really, um, shout out to the hardworking moms. Yeah. Hardworking moms. We started a douchebag McDermott. Shout out to the moms. Guys, our guest this week, Rodney Ramsey, Ramsey, 
fucking hilarious. hilarious he was guy. he was hosting at Abs, Absolute Comedy well, we in Ottawa. He was headlining this week in Absolute Comedy in Ottawa. I think he's doing Kingston next. Yeah, he's and, at Kingston now. Yeah. Uh, he's got Toronto on the bucket list. He's from Montreal. Um, check him out on Facebook, just or just just search Rodney Ramsey because yeah. he's a content producer. He's fantastic. He's a father of two. Yeah. Well, father of one, one, two, two, oh, two yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, let's get on in. Let's have some fun. Enjoy the talk. Afraid of your children making verbal hate crimes, or that they will simply be social outcasts without the right vocabulary for today's world? Well, fear no more, because now there's the swear and say. The swear and say will teach your children 26 exclusive words and phrases straight out of the Urban Dictionary. Just give it a little spin, and F is for fuck. The sailor likes to fuck. S is for shit, as in I took a big shit. G is in German dungeon porn. Champ likes dungeon porn. I do. R is for... Hey, we said that we're not going to say that word on air, Chris. Available for where fine learning toys are sold. Another quality by... Wyco. Wyco. By Wyco. Welcome back to another issue of Daddy Issues with Champ in Kingsbury, I guess, episode. Uh, <laughs> episode. Uh, today in, in the murder room, we've got Rodney Ramsey. What's up? <laughs> uh, why don't you introduce uh, yourself to give us like some of your credentials and, and what makes you like a daddy with issues? Uh, yeah, man. Well, you know, I'm a stand-up comedian. Uh, you know, I've done Just for Laughs and all that bullshit. Uh, uh, do some acting as well, producer, writer, you know how it is, this is Canada, so you gotta kind of be fucking everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man, uh, what makes me, I guess, a daddy with issues, and I'm a fucking com- comedian, so you know how it is, dude, you gotta watch your mouth every goddamn second of every goddamn day, make sure you're raising a friggin', you know, a uh, normal human being and not some crazy person like we are, right? <laughs> a normal human being is important, yeah. right? I wanted to warp mine just enough for them to be funny and interesting. Right, That's right, about right, the right. balance you want <laughs> on that one. So, yeah, you've had uh, some credits uh, on uh, the show 24 as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah some yeah. action credits like that and uh, off GFL. Uh, uh, let me, let me uh, correct you. That was 24-hour rental. Ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a... Uh, Oh, so good, fucking, good. Uh, yeah, it was a good, TV good. series that uh, was on Super Channel that like one person watched. So there you go. I, you know, I get the Super Channel, so maybe I should see if it's on demand. Yeah, man, it was the first time I played a crackhead. Oh, God, the first time. Yeah. How many? How many crackheads have you played? At least three. At least. Three. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's my uh, typecast. Apparently, your typecast is the crackhead. <laughs> Oh goodness! Uh, you, how many kids do you have? Uh, one right now, a six-year-old, and one on the way. Oh, nice! When when does it do? Uh, I think like uh, another five months. Okay, another five months. Yeah, supposed to be a boy. Supposed to be a boy. Yeah, yeah. As they say, seventy-five percent likely. Okay, so your first one's a girl, right? Yeah, first one's a girl. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Chris has a boy and a girl. Yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 million, yeah. million dollar uh, package because it's going to cost me a million dollars by the end of it. I swear, like they both oh, have yeah. their expenses. Oh, of and, course. But uh, yeah, I love them both. And uh, two and through CFL rules, man. I'm uh, done. Uh, one of my boys, he's got like uh, like four girls and he asked me he's like yo man like I don't know what it is it's like I don't know why I have so many girls I was like oh it's uh, because you fuck soft that's why so it's about love making you know? oh goodness <laughs> I, the thing is, like, I always thought I was going to have a boy. I always thought that that was going to be the case. But then it was, like, the day she told me that she was pregnant. And I was, like, I, was, like, I know exactly what session that was that got you not. That's a girl. <laughs> and I told her. I was, like, I, was, like, I, was, like, I was, like, we're having a girl. And I got so, like, wrapped up in it. And I was, like, I, was, like, I don't want to know what the sex is until the birth because I know it's a girl. That she made us have a gender reveal party just so that way if it was a boy, mm-hmm. my heart wouldn't be crushed when it came out. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Ash, Ash is over here. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Little seashell. Um, yes, we should talk, you want to talk briefly about this? Uh, we'll talk about that in the intro. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about our beers in the in the intro when we record their when we record our intro. 
you know, we are drinking as usual. As per se on a Sunday. <laughs> Sunday mornings. Whippersnapper. Whippersnapper, Ottawa local brewery. We'll talk a little bit about them later, uh, yeah. a little bit later. It's uh, delicious and refreshing. Delicious and refreshing. There you have it. Uh, are you are you more prepared for a second one? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. We got like a house and shit. Okay. Like, you know, before the, we had the first one, we had a condo, one bedroom of condo. So we had to oh, give man. her the bedroom and we were fucking on a pullout couch uh, in yeah, the living room. Yeah, so it was one bedroom condo. Yeah, and yeah, we were not having a lot of sex. I'm just saying. Oh, I you know. hear that that kind of happens yeah. after a baby, like in the first place, like you, you have... You have that period of recovery, but then you also have the exhaustion that just comes with having a baby that gets yeah. in the way of having sex. I, honestly, the only thing I'm worried about is like, you know, the new, because you adapt to time, right? There's a new, uh, babies and kids create their own time. Like people say like, oh, you know, kids make time go faster. I don't believe that. I believe it's a new kind of time that you're getting used to, right? Okay. I mean, it makes time feel fast, but I think that's just a bad description of it. So I'm just worried about like, kind of like, okay, so what's my time? gonna be like now you know what I mean better scheduling out and I'm the worst scheduling shit okay. you know what I'm saying so like I'm gonna have to be bringing this baby with me to coffee shops and shit while I'm writing you know my freaking yeah. terrible dick jokes <laughs> <laughs> do you do you like is that like your kind of process do you go to coffee shops and write or uh, not, like I mean I do go to coffee shops right I don't really write jokes I've tried I've been trying to start you know what I mean usually like something funny happens in my life that inspires me I'll go up on stage and I'll just talk about just it, talk until, about it yeah, until it's well. funny yeah. but like that hasn't been happening as much the older I get because I got like so much like you know important shit to do that's <laughs> not funny like paying bills and whatnot so i've been forcing myself to go to coffee shops then i fucking then i'll put something down on paper then i'll smoke a huge joint go for a walk and then something come, might come out yeah. that's usually that's usually how it is right the inspiration comes and then yeah then like you kind of like put it together to like a puzzle piece in your mind yeah. i find that if i do that intentionally it doesn't work but if my mind let my mind do it you know what i mean i'll put it together for me pretty nicely i like that you've been you've been hosting all week at absolute right yeah and you're headlining next week? Next week I'm headlining, yes. Nice. You're nice. you're originally from Montreal, yeah, but you're Toronto Montreal. based, right? Yeah, no, I used to be Toronto based. Mm. And then um yeah, man, I mean it was just like it was weird. It was it was funny because when I was living out there, like things were going like kind of, you know, you kind of have an idea of what you want, like in your head. You imagine like I was, you know, working the clubs, I was like fucking I was working at Second City, I was like booking like commercials and stuff, but I was fundamentally just unhappy, man. It was like the lifestyle down there. It just wasn't for me. You know what I mean? Because like it's like it's like all work. You know. You know what I'm saying? And like yo, know, so I uh, moved back to Montreal, still with my uh, my lady. You know. Okay. I moved back with her, and it was just like you know. I don't know. I kind of feel like Montreal kind of inspired you to do stuff that is different from you know what I mean? Like just corporate work kind of a thing and I kind of dig that a little bit more you know Montreal's much more of an artsy city right yeah, yeah. you know what I mean you know it's cheaper to live too like there's no way I'd have my daughter in private school if I was living in Toronto right okay. she'd be in the ghetto with Scarborough somewhere fucking learning how to knife fight you know <laughs> <I think so. laughs> knife fights one on one Scarborough High it's, it's an elective it's an elective it's well they started early right because she's only six right yeah, yep. yeah that's in, true in, in, like, sorry I'm from Edmonton I thought it was shady enough but kindergartens yeah. when you learn how to like carve a shit mm -hmm. yeah because, like, that's what I noticed is, like, Toronto, Toronto Toronto's definitely more, like, they focus on the industry, but Montreal, you definitely see a lot more of the art and the craft. Oh, of, yeah, but don't get me wrong, like, I'm jealous, like, all my boys have moved to Toronto, and they're all, like, booking a lot of great stuff. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, for sure. It's way harder, like, acting, for example, like, it's way harder to book acting in Montreal. You do a few gigs, and nobody's booking you because you've done, like, every restaurant commercial it's possible to do, and they don't want you anymore. You're you know just, I mean? your face is already super Yeah, familiar, you know, right? you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and that kind of pisses me off, but again, it all, it still pushes me to do my own thing, which is what, you know, that's the love, man. Like, I don't know, I, you know, the money comes in, but it's like, the love is what keeps you going, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's yeah, important, man. right? Yeah. You have to know what's not gonna, like, burn you out, mm -hmm. and what's not gonna destroy you, and... Exactly. You're, you've been talking about priorities, right? Like, your priorities change the moment you have a family. For real, yeah. Because yeah. you gotta try and make sure that this six-year-old doesn't grow up to be fucked up, like... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What was what was like the biggest struggle having like a young baby in a one bedroom condo and like just kind of you were yeah. much younger then too. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. Like you know, it's um 
the whole thing is like expectations, you know, like I didn't expect to have one kid, you know what I mean? I was like, I'm gonna be a rogue comic, you know what I mean? You know, you have that romantic idea, idea of idea. what it is, and then you experience it, and you're like, this is the worst. <laughs> I'm so lonely. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, this is awful, I hate this town, you know? Yeah. yeah, I love the show, but they didn't talk to me after at all. They yeah, just kept yeah. talking. But... Yeah, but I mean, like, I don't know, like, you know, you have your kid, and like, you fucking fall in love with this, like, thing, you know what I mean? This, yeah. this like, almost person, and then, you know what I mean? Then, you learn how to make things work. I mean, like, yo, would I, you know, I would love to, you know, be a little bit more mobile, but like, dude, I mean, like, the other day my my daughter looked up at the television and she saw me in a commercial and she lost her mind, you know? That's like one of the greatest feelings in the goddamn oh, yeah. world, you know what I mean? Like, I get to inspire this fucking new human. You're, her, like, you're a hero, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But not, you know what? Not even, I'm just like, I'm just a really awesome person to her and like I'm an awesome person that she can be like if she wants to you know what I mean yeah. like uh you know heroes let you down man <laughs> like, you know, awesome people they're allowed to be fallible sometimes right that's no, true that's true it, it's funny because like that's been the big thing that kind of has come up as we've been talking with people on this podcast is so many parents are just like you know I want I want to raise my kids so that way they look up and respect me and they like me and think I'm a decent human being right and that's kind of where you're coming through and that's like to, to her, I, I can't really do a lot of wrong, and she sees me, and there's that inspiration, yeah. right? Yeah. What, what do you, like, what's your daughter interested in? Like, I know six is a young age. Man, like, you know what? She is getting uncomfortably familiar with what I'm interested in. You know, like, uh, she's, like, she got, she's tons of charisma, so, like, she charms the hell out of people. She's super cute. She's, you know, she's, she's biracial, so, you know, you know how biracial kids are fucking hot as hell. Right? <laughs> so, like, yeah. So, like, she's got that going for her. She's got the charisma. And she loves being on stage, dude. Okay. Like, and, like, me, man, I didn't, I'm not one of those parents that, like, my kid's got to be, like, famous. So not into that. You know what I mean? I don't believe that makes you happy at all. But, dude, I mean, like, she's most comfortable on stage. So, like, what stage is, is a six-year-old getting on? Okay, so, uh, first time she ever got up, right? Uh, I used to take her to this little community center when she was, like, two, three, right? And they used to have this thing where they'd, like, uh, once a week, uh, the parents would, would go with them, right? And once a week, they'd, like, put this, like, little soapbox up, and the kids, they'd ask the kids if they want to sing one of the songs that they've been singing, like, every day, all day in class, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, yeah, some of the kids went up, and then they asked my daughter, it was her turn, and she was like, she's like, no, 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 no. She walked up and didn't do anything. Okay. She walked up on the stage and she just stared at everyone, right? And then everybody started singing for her and then she kind of like liked it and then she got off the stage. I was like, how was that? She's like, she's like, I kind of liked it, right? <laughs> so then the following week, she goes back, gets up there and just belts as loud as she can, like, just like huge performance. And it was, she was just like, dad, this is the most, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> and yeah, and then now like, yo, man, that's her thing. Like, you know, she gets on stage and she just kills it. And she's like, she's been doing this since she was like, you know, like four, three, four years old. Okay. Yeah. And she's just really into it, you know? And like right now I'm just scared. I just want her to like, you know, also be good at science and shit. Just yeah. so yeah. she doesn't become this addicted fucking <laughs> addict that's like so we are, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? <laughs> Freaking 15 years from now, Jay's booking her and she's <laughs> like, <laughs> why is he only paying me $10 a spot? God <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get fired. <laughs> oh gosh! I, and that's, this is one of the things. Like because I'm always on stage and always been a performer. Like you know, part of it is like you want you want your kid to be able to like enjoy the things that you enjoy, but you also want them to be able to enjoy the things that maybe you didn't. Like for me, you were saying science. For me, it was math. My whole thing is. I'm gonna teach, I'm gonna try and teach my daughter that math is easy, yeah. even though for me math is really hard, for my partner math is really hard, but the idea like, if she believes it's easy, maybe she'll like approach it with right. that, that standpoint, but also like, do musical theater summer camp. Yeah, man. Care. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, you know, we're privileged. Like, I mean, super privileged. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and my parents, because they were like, uh, you know, they're, I'm first generation, so my parents came from the Caribbean, and they didn't really understand that there was access to like all this like sh cool shit like from arts to science stuff you know what I mean so I never did a much of the extracurricular stuff so it's cool to give these kids a chance to experience all of these like whole new skills you know what I mean and possible futures for yeah, them absolutely. right yeah. yeah so for your daughter like she kind of saw this grow out of out of your passions and I apologize if we hear the dog barking he's in a crate because my partner's out <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll try and fix that in post <laughs> he's, he's an excitable dog um, 
you know, like, how did you get into stand-up? Like, what was your push that got you into, like, the arts and being on stage? Yeah, man, it's kind of like, I mean, it's funny, because, like, I never really exposed my daughter to what I did. She just, like, hang. I hung out with her a lot, because whatever, I'm the, I'm a comic, so I was at, day, I was at home taking care of her a lot, and my wife was, you know, day doing job, her right? day job, and you know what I mean? So she was just exposed to my personality, right? Yeah. And that made her... You know, I'm, I guess the arts is easier for somebody with charisma and like just not afraid to talk to people kind yeah. of a thing. So I was kind of always like that growing up. I probably maybe I got it from one of my parents. I guess you know what I mean. Just uh, maybe I'm just like that. Whatever. So growing up, like the arts was always something that you know, like you know, it's in elementary school, you know, I always got chosen for that big part in the play, right? Mm -hmm. Just from being me kind of thing, you know? High school drama was always the fucking class I didn't fail all the time, <laughs> right? So it was one of those things that when I got to college, I was just like fucking so bored, you know what I mean? And, uh, and like, you know, there's no, I wasn't taking theater, right? Oh like God. I was like, you know? So um, yeah, man, and one, one day, one of my girlfriends back then, um, she knows I was into stand-up just watching it, so she brought me to her school to check the stand-up out. And uh, I was watching it and I was just like, I can fucking do this. This is like, there's no way I can't do this. Right? Okay. <laughs> so like, I went to start recon. I was going to comedy clubs like every week, you know, yeah. heckling motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and uh, yeah, man. Like, uh, yeah. And I was just like, yeah, man. I was like, I'm just gonna do this. This is and first. My first spot was awesome. Uh, it always is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I. I dropped out of university, uh, college immediately, like after wow. the first spot. Yeah, then I then I went back on stage, died the second spot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it took me weeks to get back on, and maybe months. And then like, yeah, from then it was just like, yeah. Yeah, man, I just, you know, you fall in love with it's an addiction, man. Yeah, it's it nice, absolutely so. an addiction. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, do you swear in front of your kids? Um... Yes, but not a lot. Yeah. I yeah, 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 not a lot at all. Oh. Okay. What's what's your rationale? Um I I want her to understand social cues and what it is to like, you know, be appropriate and inappropriate. Like you got to teach a kid that. Swearing in context. Yeah, That's exactly. That's exactly. the house is swearing in context. Yeah. So, yeah. and don't ever swear outside the house, especially at school. It's going to get you and me both in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Both of us. And yeah, it's really hard to get at my, my son when he's fidgeting with something and it won't go in or he, he's dropped a Lego piece and he just goes, Oh, you motherfucker! And just it bounces across the floor. Wait, your son will drop a motherfucker? He will. Okay. How, <laughs> how old? Six. Six. Okay. <laughs> but he says it really low, oh, motherfucker. He says it really low, and in perfect context, right? He's not just running around calling everybody motherfuckers. So it's like, I'm like Eddie. He's like, I'm sorry, and then it, and then it's over, right? I'm just like. Not outside the house, and I walk away. Oh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it probably makes me a terrible person, but I'm in that same rationale, too. Not only social cues, but, like, the appropriate use of that language. Yeah. And if you, the more you put something away from a child, the more they're often going to abuse it, in my general experience, right? So, like, you pull it away and say, no, don't use it at all. He'll start using it in bad timing, bad context, right. bad everything, and not under the supervision of what's going on. So at least there's, I'm arming him with that. That's my rationale for being a shitty parent. <laughs> <laughs> did, did your parents swear in front of you? Absolutely. Okay, so like, your parents swore in front of you, so you grew up swearing too? No, yeah, around eight she started letting like full swears out, but she's like, again, within the context of the house and yeah, same, okay. same general ground rules. See, my right. parents never swore around us. My mom, I don't think, the only time my mother has ever said a swear word is we were playing Cards Against Humanity and I made her read the card that said bleached asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only time I've ever heard my mother swear and I was in my late 20s, so like, wow. it definitely did not shape me. <laughs> my mother <laughs> swear. Did your, did your parents swear around you? My dad cussed every second word. Yeah, my dad swore a, a lot. lot. Yeah, I remember, I remember being in like, grade two, maybe grade one, and going apple picking, and like, being like, uh, just like your kid, being like, look at these motherfucking apples, man, these motherfucking apples are huge, I love this shit, like, yo, I was like so young, and then during parent-teacher interviews, uh, the teacher told them 
that I was just dropping just bombs, right? <laughs> Get home, my mom tells my dad at the dinner table, and then my dad goes, what the fuck's wrong with you? That was his, <laughs> that was his answer. So uh, yeah, man, just pure. That's why I try to, that's why I really try to hold back. Like, my daughter, like, I don't curse that much in front of her, but she, to be a man, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I try, like, I really, really try not to. It's kind of like, you know, you do a clean show, you're kind of like, it's always in the back of your head, you know, and now it's just subconscious. But I do curse, because you can't help that. I can't help it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And she knows now which words are off limits. Yeah. You know what I mean? So she kind of knows, she knows the words, and she knows that there's some words that only adults can say right now. Okay, yeah. just like adults are the only ones that can drink beer yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. and adults are the only ones that can drive yeah. right now. So she'll call me on it, she'll be like, Dad, that's a bad word, and I'm like, sorry. But like, yo, you know, my, my wife, she's like, you know, uh, she's in academia, and she's really trying to teach my daughter what's proper and what's like, what's not, like, my wife is not like me. So, uh, yeah, she will tell my daughter, you can't say stupid, you can't say fat, like, she's taking all those there's, words there's off the words table, too, took, you know? And it took stupid right out but, of yeah, But that's yeah. also, like, you know, when we talk about, like, swearing, there's there's that idea of verbal abuse versus just that's swearing, just it. right? Just yeah. it, yeah. And using words like stupid or fat or, yeah. or demeaning and it's hurtful, right. calling someone a motherfucker, yeah. like, that's where it gets to the point where you're like, that's not swearing, that's verbal abuse. Yeah. And that's that's different. So when your dad's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. It's kind of more of a verbal abuse situation than a contextual yeah. swearing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've hit my thumb yeah. with a hammer and the swearing actually helps relieve the pain and the exactly. anxiety of the right. situation. Right. Yeah. So that, that has to be taken into context. Okay, when it comes okay. To I got a story. There was one time my, uh, uh, and this was like the first curse word she had dropped and it was why I knew I needed to put like a, you know, uh, I need to put a pin in that. Okay, so uh, it was me, uh, I don't know if you guys know Reese Turner, he's a yeah, 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 awesome show, right, show, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I need to do that show, oh, definitely, you need to so have, that's like one of the best shows, in the we're gonna show. have him as a guest on this podcast, Sweet, he's yeah. already agreed, yeah, um, so we were hanging out with my daughter, we were watching the Boondocks, I don't know if you guys are yeah, 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 still best, he's coming out with a new season of that, apparently, okay, which is the perfect time, because Trump America, anyways, so we're watching that, and it was the one with Colonel, uh, Stink, uh, Meaner, and, uh, he was like, he was, the famous line is the way he said nigga, you know what I mean? He was okay. like, nigga, like, you know, this is the funniest thing ever, right? Like, almost indecipherable from the actual word. Anyway, so we had that episode going on, so then we went to the park, and he reached my daughter. And uh, we're coming back in to my uh, to my condo, and I, and I open the door, and my daughter pushes by me. She's like, watch out, nigga! And we're both like, whoa! <laughs> And we're going to my mother-in-law's place that <laughs> night, so I'm I'm like worried that she's gonna drop this n bomb oh. all day, right? So like, it's like I can't I can't have this. Your mother-in-law's white, right? Very, <laughs> <laughs> very. <laughs> wow. Like and and with with that word with your daughter, like how do you talk about that word with your daughter? Oh man, like my daughter, she's super smart. Like we just you know, we make it very simple. You know what I mean? We we like we tell her like you know it's a very hurtful word for a certain kind of people, for black people, because they were treated this way. Like, mm -hmm. we had her, uh, you know, we had her on a lot of, like, black history stuff. We get her a lot of books. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Hart actually has a great black history show on Netflix for kids. And it's just, like, you know, it's comedic because yeah. it's Kevin Hart produced. And, like, they kind of go back in the past and, like, show, like, stuff from history. And she watches that a lot. So she kind of, we really try to connect stuff. Not you know, good. to the words, you know, what I, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 and then, like, you know, the older she gets, we kind of give it more context. So that's what we do. We kind of give her, you know, something that she can understand, and then we fill in the blanks as she goes along, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than, like, not giving a kid, like, any idea, then zero context, and they fuck up, and then you try to spring it all on them at once instead of this thing that they're just supposed to understand. Yeah, it's it's like, increment. yeah, man, yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about, yeah. right? Like, you're, yeah. it's like training an AI, right? <laughs> you feed it, like, all, you know what I mean? You keep feeding it that information, right? Like. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually funny that you bring up AI because one of like the the doctors that I researched around swearing that we'll talk about in a bit is uh, an expert in the field of AI, but wrote a book about swearing because when it comes to like artificial intelligence, they find that like 
teaching kids swear words or teaching artificial intelligence swear words at the same time that you're teaching them like modern language like reading and writing makes it become less of an impactful thing and less of like a pervasive thing because you're already just trying to comprehend the English language yeah. and it's actually almost easier to understand how to speak in the language when you know how to speak in their swears. Yeah. yeah. Which is why like the first thing I learned in French was like that te fait foutre, yeah. go fuck yourself yeah. and uh tabernacle, tabernacle. Yes. Yeah. 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 you you connect them to an emotion as well. Exactly. Right? Yeah. 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 That's it. So That's uh, a big you know, time thing. The first the first word I learned in sign language is bullshit. <laughs> you know, it's like those are the types of also things. fun to do. Yeah. It is fun yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. You can't see the action, but it's no. fun yeah. to do. But if you know, you know. Yeah. It's killer funny. <laughs> this is why we were all laughing. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's kind of cool. Um, do you remember like was that the first time you got in trouble swearing? Was the time that your t like parent yeah. teacher? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. First well, time anybody called me on it. What about you? Give me a second. Um, oh, that would have been like in in a public thing like that. Oh, uh, some girl's parents had died. And she wasn't in class that morning, and everybody's like, oh, very somber about it. And I stuck my hand up, and I was like, did she get fucking breakfast? And that was the, the biggest, strangest thing that I think I ever said as a kid. And How old? Oh, maybe nine. <laughs> in school. In school. Okay. Okay. I was, I, I didn't know swear words, because like I said, my mom, like I was raised very religiously, I went to a Christian, like I was homeschooled till yeah. grade two, and then I went to a Christian school. And do you know, do you know the pun guys on YouTube? Uh, they do like, um, it's it's Daniel Shaba and Johnny Nona, they they work with Jeff Leeson, okay. a whole bunch of, you know, Jeff Leeson down in London. Um, he, I went to, I went to elementary school with him, and he walked around with like all these orange peels one day, just being like, shit for sale, shit for sale, and I had no idea even what the word shit meant, and I just kind of like followed him around and be like, shit for sale, shit for, and then we were at a Christian school, so I got like sent to the principal's office, and I remember like crying in the bathroom, because I was like, oh no, I'm gonna get like kicked out of Bible school. What did I do? <laughs> oh, yeah, what did I do? Just that, that happened when I was 19 instead. I was, I was 19? <laughs> you like, Wow. Oh, no, 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 I went to like a Bible college and then then I did not get accepted back for a second year. So that, seriously, that happened when you were 19? No, no, this happened when I was 7. That okay. story happened when I was yeah, 7. Jesus. Oh, jeez. No, 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 I was saying, I was just saying, like, I was paranoid that okay. I was going to get kicked out of school okay. for saying shit oh, yeah. at the age of 7. Like, and what then, bunker did you go But I was like, in? I didn't get kicked out of Bible school until 19. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. I think the fact that my teacher was so amazed that I was asking about breakfast, she totally, like, let the swear go, but then she's like, no, he swore. And I was like, get out of here, and that was weird. <laughs> so it was, it was more of a shocking statement, but I was like, it's the most important meal of the day, was my defense. And I, like, I, don't even, I don't even know about that, but... Yeah, my uh, my youngest, my oldest, his one of his first words was, oh shit. Amanda would be, like, doing things and running around, or she'd forget something and she'd mutter under her breath, oh shit. So, Eddie, sitting in his high chair, had his little... Blast there is watching the Paw Patrol, and he snapped back this way and dropped it, and oh shit! And that was his like one of his first yeah, words, yeah, right? So, <laughs> like, Amazing. yeah, right? I'm just totally, totally impressive. But uh, good, good, makes good. you know they're listening all the time. Good, for good, sure, that was on like, camera. Yeah, I, I I know that people won't get to see this, but um, my my niece. We were at like a birthday party for her, for our nephew two weeks ago, and she had two scratches on her middle finger, and she's only four years old, and she came up to me, she's like, Uncle Matthew, I have boo-boos on my finger, and right. just like solidly flipping me off. I was Weird. like, oh no, we should go show Andy Katie. <laughs> so I turned around, I was like, Andy Katie, and then like there she is yeah, holding she up the middle finger, she's like, I got a boo-boo on it my up. finger. Throw and and Andy Katie was like, oh, we better, we better fix that before daddy sees it. And I was like, no, no, daddy needs to see it. See, that's <laughs> when you put your phone on record. Yeah. That's a viral moment, man. It is, it is. <laughs> Don't keep that to yourself. <laughs> real world, man. Just, just need those Snapchat glasses you've got. Oh, oh man, I love those things. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Um, so I did a bit of research around swearing with, with kids and actually most of the science says that swearing in front of kids is inconsequential. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it, but then of course it, we've already kind of touched on this, that difference between verbal abuse and, and just contextual, contextual swearing. swearing. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of, uh, there's 
Toronto parenting coach Sarah uh, Rosen, sweet, I wrote her name down really wrong, nice. uh, in Global News back in March who said that, you know, swearing is just a personal choice. And it depends on how you really want your child to per be perceived. Because what do you think of when you see kids that swear, right? Exactly. Like, there are some moments where it's hilarious and it's cute and we're like, oh, that there's that. There's no yeah, real intention. when it's like random and, you know, uh, coming out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, like you're seeing a kid drop a bunch of F-bombs constantly, right? Exactly. Like, did you see Endgame? No, I didn't watch Endgame. You didn't see Endgame? Okay. We were talking about how in Endgame there's, there's like a scene it's early on where Tony Stark's talking to his daughter, mm. like his little five-year-old daughter, and he says shit. Mm. And then, or he says shit and he doesn't know that she's sitting right around the corner and then he, she's like, shit, shit. And it's, there's like this really cute moment because he yeah. turns to her he's like, oh no, no, we don't use that word. Uh, and then she's like, well, what are you doing up? And he's like, because I got shit to do. <laughs> and so it's a cute like moment, but then it's different than like, you know, the, those kids that you see that are dropping F-bombs every yeah. second word out of like just chaos, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, there's a cognitive scientist uh, named Benjamin Bergen who wrote an actual book called What the F? And it's all about the science of swearing in front of your kids. And he was also like, fleeting expletives? Absolutely fine. It helps them develop language skills, kind of like what that AI reporter was talking about. But the other big thing is it also helps with socialization, mm. right? I was awkward as shit growing yeah. up. I'm still awkward as shit. And I think part of that is because I didn't swear for so long. Mm. And then when I suddenly learned all the swear words at like mm. the age of 12 or 13, mm. they all came out. Yeah. And it was just, just like, walked up to any group like, what's up, motherfuckers? They're like, hey! <laughs> I, well, <laughs> You're in. I remember, yeah. I remember at like recess one day going to someone and be like, What's up, you motherfucking son of a bitch? And I was like, I was like being like, in my head, I was like, I'm being friendly. But yeah. he's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I just learned all these words. Yeah. <laughs> like verbal abuse. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's what it turned into, right? Can, can a child distinguish between verbal abuse and just like, like just the basic... I don't think they'll have the language to say what it is, but they'll know that it's that they're being. They'll, you know, I mean, the, the emotions, right? They'll feel it. Yeah. They'll, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they'll they'll take it in as something negative. They might not be able to give it the language, but they'll. Know. Okay. Yeah. So then, as a parent, how can you recognize when when maybe you've crossed that line with like the explicit explicitive becoming? I think you have to be aware enough to know that it's verbal abuse, be able to tell your child that it is what it is. You know, and it's all about the awareness. And having giving it the language so that you guys can talk about it and to know that it's going on. I think other than that, there's absolutely no way. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I do agree with that. The tone of what stuff is being said and, and kind of knowing and drawing the lines of what what's what's acceptable and how it makes them feel. Yeah. At the end of it. Yeah, man. Like if I, you know, if you tell my daughter, you're not allowed to say fuck, you're not allowed to say bitch, this is wrong because, you know, it's abusive in such and such a way. And then she hears me call somebody a fucking bitch you know yeah. what I mean she's gonna be like dad you know what I mean yeah. if I call her a fucking bitch she's like that's gonna you know what I mean worst thing she'll ever heard right cause yeah. not only am I the aggressive you know -ness that I've said it in you know the tone that I've taken but she also knows these words are terrible it's right like, like the, do as I say not as yeah, I yeah, do exactly. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. you gotta give these kids language and you gotta make them aware of it as much as possible. So, you know? so the more we're self-aware about the way that we present ourselves and the, and the words that we choose to speak, uh, obviously kids are going to pick up on that type of awareness because yep. they're also developing a self-awareness. Exactly. Um, you know, there is there's this whole idea where, like, I I notice I've heard because I was raised in a very religious community. I still have foots in very religious communities where they talk a lot about how society is becoming more profane and that society is becoming more accepting of derogatory language or swearing. Um, what are our thoughts on that idea of like just? Yeah, the more you say stuff, the more it does make it acceptable. So if we don't curb ourselves in in that, and yeah, it's becoming more accessible to everybody. I mean. Is it is it we've been swearing more, or are we being caught more often for it, or is that weird? Well, I think that like, I think that just the evolution of what a swear word is is has changed, right? Um, go back to like the 1800s in in England, and you know, bloody and bugger are two right. of the most profane words, and you know, fuck is used almost alliteratively like back then. And, yeah, you know, it was like used a lot more freely than even the word bloody. So. You know, I think that there, there's a historical context that swearing hasn't really changed. It's just been the words that have changed. And yeah, the evolution of the language itself. So there's a lot more swears out there now. Yeah, so it's dumbed down the language a bit, right? Acronyms, things like that, in a greater sense, or 
Has it dumbed down the language, though? Like, you see some of those studies that talk about, like, people who swear have a higher level of intelligence. Yeah. Some, well, of, that is, cl- some right. of that is clickbait, clickbait bullshit. Yeah. Like, it wasn't stuff that I was, like, willing to, like, fully research for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of, but, like, you have, to, you have to wonder, like, what is the reason that someone chooses to swear? Or uses, like... You know, I think that, these, you know, you talk about, like, you know, uh, old... You know, England back in the day and what they were using, but like they didn't have the internet accelerating and perpetuating all this information, right? You know, at the same time, there wasn't like corners of the internet, there wasn't these big, like, you know, forums. So I don't know, I think language uh, has changed because of that, and I think you could perceive it as, you know, we're getting more and more vulgar, and, you know, there's a lot more cursing, but I mean, I guess it really all depends on where you look. I mean, Look at uh, when Donald Trump said, uh, what was it? Grabbing the pussy. Grabbing by the pussy. Grabbing by the pussy. I mean, you couldn't say pussy on television before that, and then they media perpetuated that, and then now you can sing pussy on television, it ain't a thing. Well, right? like, when he when he called uh, those countries shithole countries, boom. and then suddenly, like, on the news, they're saying shit, shit, yeah. shit, and they're not censoring it, and then suddenly I'm recognizing on, like, on TV shows before 10 p.m. they're now able to say shit. Yep. How, uh, I'd, I'd like to thank South Park for some of that with their episode they said 168 times <laughs> and word shit. So, and that was on cable a few yeah. years back. So we were like, you know, yeah, it's become dumbed down to a certain extent. But sure. then again, you have these giant forums that people don't talk like. They, you know what I mean? It's just like, I, don't, yeah. I, I, I really think it depends where you look and there's just so many places to look, right? I mean, before when there was no internet, there was a time where we had radio... And television and, and the bad paper. television and the and paper. The, yeah, and the paper, right? Yeah. There's just less forums to like, you know, public speech and I mean, and those forums were always corporate and you know what I mean? They're talking to a certain kind of people, right? Well, they're all owned by the same people, right? Yeah, yeah like, exactly. and so they are able to control the content. But now that we live in a society that we can create and generate our own content, exactly, which people anybody. will use the language that they have. Exactly. Right, like I, I'm a big fan of Black Twitter. Like, okay. it's just the funniest thing to me, right? And uh, like every now and then I'll go to Reddit and like uh, check out the best uh, things from Black Twitter. And you know the language that they're using is Black Americans, right? They're dropping in bombs all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're talking like you know what I mean. They're using a lot of slang, but that's the language, right? And you would never have a forum for that, like. 30, 40 years ago, Definitely right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they were talking like that in, in, you know, in their communities, but now, you know, I'm just saying, like, yeah, I mean, I guess you can call it dumbing it down, but you can also call it what happens when massive amount of people start communicating with each other, and they all come from their same, like, cultures and subcultures and whatever, right? Yeah, uh, just a bigger platform. You know, huge, that, right? right? So, like, I mean... By, in that sense, it's changing how we're swearing and what swearing yeah I mean you know you can put a negative spin on it if you want but you can also put a positive spin on yeah. it right like uh, I mean yeah language is changing because more people are able to publicly speak yeah. <laughs> well and also like we're, we're creating like universal languages too mm-hmm. with the internet right and with the universal languages comes slang of and course. Uh, out of that is going to be like the birth of of new swears, yeah. right? Well, look at uh, the dictionary has to add all these crazy words, right? Because yeah. like you have to, a word has to be like written like a certain amount of time for it to become an official word. And there's people on the internet who are writing these crazy ass words. stupid yeah. words, right? Yeah. But like, yo, by the definition of like what's accepted as a word, you got to kind of put it in the dictionary because people are using it, you know? But then you've also got the urban dictionary, right? right. Where which just covers phrases and sentences, phrases, yeah. sentences, slang, slang, but a lot of the swears yeah. too, but right? A lot of the swears for yeah. sure, right? Like that's. That's where I learned a lot of like more of the the slangs for like the gross sexual things that people yeah, talk definitely. about. Definitely. It's just like you can't find it in the dictionary. Try it on Urban Try Dictionary. It on Urban yeah. dictionary. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything um, that you're gonna do differently with with your new child coming up? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was just thinking that. But is there anything that you're gonna do differently with this with the new child coming up in a few months that you maybe? didn't do or you did do the first time that you're I think subconsciously I was trying to make my daughter like me you know what I mean I was thinking I think subconsciously I wanted a human that was like super charismatic and like can manipulate people from their personality <laughs> like I kind of I think I think subconsciously I wanted that I I, I, I like I I didn't you know it wasn't anything I did intentionally but I think I, I think I must have because she's just we're just really similar you know there yeah. must have some intention there so uh, what I want to do is like I don't want to be like saying I want to be more hands-off with my 
new child. I mean, I want, you know, I obviously want to love mm -hmm. this person and give them a lot of my attention, but I don't, I'm going to try less to intentionally make them a person like me. You know what I mean? I want, mm -hmm. I'm very, more just to see like, uh, what they'll take from my, my personality if I'm not like totally <laughs> oppressing them yeah. with it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to be like, yo, if, if I take this kid somewhere, and they ask this kid if they want to get on stage. I'm not gonna fucking pick him up and put him on the stage and see what happens. I will let him make the decision. You want to go up there or not? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No forcing. I want. I want. I want to see some decision making. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So that that's that's gonna be a little more a little more of a thing that I'm gonna do. Definitely try to inspire. You know, more individuality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Less okay. overbearingness. Okay. So it's it's more or less like you live your life. You're not gonna live the life that I want you to, or the life that I. No, but you know, honestly, man, like I wasn't looking to have an artsy child. Like I would prefer a, a, somebody who didn't fucking go to auditions or like fucking be on tour with a band. You know what I yeah. mean? So like, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, I want to fucking, I want to. I want a quantum physicist, man. <laughs> oh, okay. I want I someone want, that can be willing to pay for my retirement. <laughs> I, I want someone to explain space and time to me. That's what I fucking want, okay? That's what I want. <laughs> did you, like, this is off topic, did you hear that there's, like, a group of people that are trying to open a portal to a parallel, like, reality or parallel universes? Oh, yeah. No, man. It was, like, I was seeing it was, like, something down in Tennessee. There's, like, a group of, like, scientists that are working on uh, trying to open up portals to like parallel universes. Such a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't awesome you ever though. seen like a sci-fi movie? Yeah, uh, Stranger <laughs> Things just dropped like a couple days ago. I, I mean, haven't watched season watched three yet. Season, uh, season yeah, three's yeah. good. I went back and I uh, watched them all. That's, uh, that's, that's a, a good master, run. master storytelling right yeah, there. It is. It, and it's like master storytelling that is like Kind of like family friendly, mm -hmm. but like got the dark twist. That's a good. It's actually a good example on uh, using of uh, of cuss words, man. Yeah, they, uh, they don't. Uh, I think shit is as is as hard as it goes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is and it's perfect for the kids. You know what I mean? And they don't they don't drop it like crazy. They you know drop I mean? it when they need to, mm -hmm. right? When it when it when it serves an emotional or yep. a physical or like just a societal response. Yep. Exactly, a response that you would see in real in real exactly. life, right? Yeah, yeah that, sh that that shows great because it really toes the line of like uh, you know uh, PG thirteen and. PG kind of thing. It's always kind of the scares back and, forth, and the, back and forth. oh yeah, man. There, man, uh, you saw Rudy get eaten by those dogs. Like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> not good. <laughs> Yeah, masterclass, man. Yeah. No, that, that's it's a good it's a good way because like it's something where I would feel comfortable showing like my kid at like eight or nine or ten, being like, you know, it might be a little scary, but like, oh yeah, we'll like we'll work it out. Oh yeah, I've been exposing my daughter because like I mean I I've always wanted a kid who like I can like you know hang out and watch like certain movies and stuff yeah, so I've been exposing yeah. her to like not like crazy stuff you know what I mean well you expose her to the boondocks I'm like I'm like oh yeah. six years old yeah <laughs> I, I, I gave her a little slow I gave her to her give, a little, little slower jump, doses little, yeah. Uh, but yeah man I mean like I watched like really like I took her to go see uh, Into the Spider-Verse oh yeah and yeah. that yeah. have you seen that yeah, to me in my opinion the best Spider-Man the best that I've heard that has Spider-Man ever 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 I mean like I, I, you read all the lists Homecoming yeah. was incredible sorry okay. Homecoming Homecoming was incredible. I haven't like, seen Homecoming yet. I haven't seen Homecoming a, yet. That's a great art. Oh, I just saw Far From Home. Oh. But yeah, the yeah. new one that just came out. Yeah. Which was great. But, it, but on the Spider Into the Spider Verse. I mean, like, it's it was, uh, I mean, it was, but okay, so me and my daughter in there, right? And that they said PG, okay? They said PG, all right? So I'm like thinking, okay, I'll bring my daughter. This is not going to be a thing, right? Like, like, 10 minutes into the movie, uh, a little bit of a spoiler, but whatever. It's not going to be the movie happens 10 minutes in. Freaking like, um, what's his name? Carlton Fist there. Um, uh, oh, the Fist guy, Kingpin. Kingpin beats Spider Man to, to death, death with his fist. <laughs> My daughter like looks at me, and I'm like, uh, "Do you want to stay here?" She's like, you know, she like she thinks about. It, she's like, "Yeah, I'm in, Daddy." Okay. You know, yeah, yeah, man. And you know, she took the whole movie, and I was like, "Yeah." This I is... started early with some of the stuff I wanted to share with Eddie, like Samurai Jack. Nice. That's probably the best bridge to tell the story nice. of, of like samurai films and that 
warrior code of honor. It's a and good he's one, bro. Instantly addicted. Yeah. I start. I show, put it on once when he was four, and he was like, I'm bored. And then yeah. this year, he's like, I need to see oh, something six now. new. Six, six, six is uh, six. they follow storylines yeah, now. Yeah, and Jack is great because he's an amalgamation of mm. a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. and he's always righteous and doing the right thing. Oh so yeah, Samurai movie. Jack is amazing. And again, no swearing on that one. It was a Cartoon Network thing. But I got uh, you know it's a good one to give your uh, your son. Um, uh, Last Airbender. Ah, yeah, the, no, not the movie. Not the movie. Not the not movie. It was not even close. But so, yeah, that story. Oh my God! Like, just like it's great now because there is such a catalog of everything of content there. from us growing up for the last like 30, 40 odd years. You yeah. know what I mean? And like, we got my daughter on the old she and then we put her on the new one. She, you know what I mean? Like, you know, and the storytelling is advanced yeah. now too. Like the kind of stuff that these kids are getting. It's way, I mean, way like deeper. there was no, there was no consistent story. There was no arc in the cartoons yeah. we were watching. You know, he might pop up, he'd get his cat, he'd whoop some ass, and then now was the day. You know what I mean? So the, 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 the argument to that uh, difference is X-Men 92. Where like yeah. which I got I got all five seasons on DVD to introduce it to. That her. was one of the first and times they like, had the, uh, the art. That's yeah. why everybody was that's dude. That's the only reason I think <laughs> they're able to come out with the movies and be so successful. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. I mean that cartoon was on a next level. I yeah. hear they're rebooting that cartoon in the next few years, nice. which will be great because I'll get to raise Natty with like X Men '92 because yeah. I've got the box set, yeah. and then with the new stuff mm -hmm. and. We can forget 90% of the movies. Yeah. You can see X2 and First Class, and that's all That's it. First, <laughs> first Class makes, yeah, a good transition. Days of Future's Past. But yeah, anyway. they really fucked up X-Men, huh? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see Like we'll see what happens over the next four or five years as Calvin uh, Feige brings them into the MCU. Like, I don't even watch the... the I don't really watch a lot of Marvel movies anymore, man. I'm more into the TV shows now, man. Yeah. Like, uh, all the Netflix stuff. Like, yeah, we're talking about, like, The Punisher and all that stuff. I just like how dark it is. I just like everybody cussing. I like the murder. I can't take these... I can't take PG-13 movies. You should check out Doom Patrol. Yeah, I tried to watch it, and you want to hear something? The reason it's been hard for me, because I just... It's hard to look at Brandon Fraser, man. Yeah. He's just got, like, that He's first like, episode, I know he turned into the fucking robot. Yeah, what's his as a robot? Dude, I just, it's hard for me to look at him as this giant fat dude. I just remember Xeno, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, seeing him like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It's I really know, man. It's really, it's not, it's awful. I'm going to watch that shit. I'm happy that he's dead. He's back, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, and it was, it's actually, like, it's one of those, like, 18 plus shows mm. that, has been solid throughout, but it's also been zany. Yeah, okay. like, you know what I, you know what I did watch because my daughter watches uh, Teen Titans Go, which is one of the funniest shows I heard that ever written. Like uh, cartoons, dude. Like I mean, I'm watching this shit with her, and like I'm like, how can I get a writing job on this motherfucker? This <laughs> is genius. So I started watching Titans. Yes, uh, I loved it. People hated I that shit. I couldn't in, do I it. Like, oh my god, yeah, seeing a Robin so murder people <laughs> is like the best thing ever. I don't care how cheesy, yeah. how like mock dark, because you know there's like that dark tone now. Fuck Batman. Yeah, hey man. <laughs> but you know what? It looked dumb on the on the trailer. But when he said it during the show, he like he like broke like 15 arms. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it really you know. Yeah, that was good. Oh. I still find the time to watch a lot of stuff. Uh, right before bed, bro. Yeah. Fall asleep bed. Shit that I crawled to bed at like four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, you you're going down, I'm getting up. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that's really not to wake up. Um, yeah, been some, uh, been some interesting swear word conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think we can kind of like start to wrap this up. Uh, any, any final thoughts that you'd like to give about anything that you've particularly learned as a dad that you would want to share um, anything around swearing you just do like give us some final thoughts man shit I don't know um, yeah I don't know I think it's uh, I think the best thing you could possibly do is to like let your kids know which words are off limits but also why you know yeah. what I mean like that's uh, that's huge it's the explanation, man. You gotta tell your kids. You gotta give your kids the respect and let them know. You know what I mean? And then also let them correct you when you fuck up. Right? Yeah, you know what I mean? And apologize sure. for that. You know what I mean? You make rules, you follow them too, man. That's, uh, yeah, it's my parenting tip of the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, any, anything from you, Chris? No, he summed up pretty good context and, and learning and teaching them when it's appropriate and definitely let them call you on 
your own shit. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only way they're gonna learn, and it makes you keeps you a bit more honest. All right. Um, if if you guys want to like follow up for any like extra reading on this topic, uh, Dr. Emma Byrne, uh, she's the scientist in the field of AI. She wrote "Swearing is Good for You: The Amazing Science of Bad Language," uh, and she talks about how how swearing helps us process emotions, how it can actually lower uh, the effects of physical pain, reduce anxiety, um, and is a big thing with helping trauma victims recover language. Uh, because a lot of times with trauma, and as a therapist, we see trauma victims typically lose a lot of language skills and lose a lot of socialization skills, but being able to learn to deal with it emotionally and express things emotionally can, can lead to, uh, to further recovery. Um, and it, she talks about how it's about learning the language, right? Not banning the language, but learning the language. So if you're interested, I would check out that, uh, that book. Um, it's got a lot of great reviews. Uh, you know, it had a very great synopsis in the first chapter that I read. So <laughs> I can't read every full book that I recommend. Yeah, I was just thinking, I'm like, is this guy reading all these books? No, I'm not reading all For these this books. this episode? I'm like, no. <laughs> no, I do, I, do, I do some research, but yeah, I also, yeah. like, I have all, lots of textbooks, like, and my, yeah. You've got so resources. I've got resources at my fingertips nice. and, and the internet, right? right. The yeah, internet is right. a great thing. Uh, so thank you for coming uh, out. If people wanted to check you out, where can they find you on the internet? Shit, man. You know, uh, just Rodney Ramsey anywhere, man. Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Yeah, the Facebook like page is good and the Instagram is good. You want to see a lot of videos. I was about to say, yeah, you have videos up. And you, content, you put, yeah, you put yeah. content up. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a content guy. So, cool. yeah, Bye, you want to see some content. content. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, come at me, come at me, bro. Are you like this? This is gonna drop likely mid to end July. Any touring that you got going on August September? Shit, I don't even fucking. I'm too high to fucking. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. Yeah, just go to the fucking IG and the like page and the RonnieRamsey.com and yeah, you'll find out all that shit. All right, cool beans. Thanks for being with us, Ronnie. Thanks for being. Yeah, thanks for having me, boys. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time for parenting advice with Stripper Mom and Uncle Freddy. And this week's question reads as follows. Dear Stripper Mom and Uncle Freddy, my four-year-old child believes that monsters leave in her closet. Doesn't matter how many times I come into her bedroom and show her that there's nothing in her closet, she still insists that something is there. Do you have any recommendations on how to deal with this? Sincerely, John from Halifax. I per personally think this is very normal. It's very normal behavior for a child, a young child, to believe there's monsters in the closet. Lord knows, all they have to do is put like a few hours in on the internet and they know there's monsters in the closet. So what I want you to do to help give them perspective is make sure you make them aware of all the monsters on the outside. They're way worse. And that way, the monsters in the closet will seem very cute by comparison. They probably look like those ones from the Monsters, Inc. The big eyeball, he's great. I love him. So, to sum up, scarier outside. Do that. John, good luck. I don't, know how to, I don't know how to add to that strip of mom very well put, as usual, so articulate. Listen, I think children should just let, let them go through their paces. Like when my little brother and I were young, there was a time where he just, he went through so many sleepless nights being completely frightened that the boogeyman was going to come get him. Night after night, just cold sweats. It got really bad. And uh, then eventually he learned, you know, the boogeyman never really came to take him away. Uh, cancer did, but not the boogeyman. <laughs> and this has been parenting advice with Stripper Mom and Uncle Freddy. No second ad this week, just a PSA from Champ. Love having sex, but afraid of making more babies? Is birth control too expensive? Do condoms feel too rough? Afraid of visiting Dr. Vice for the old snip snip? Well, have you heard of the old pull-out method. Just pulling out? Yeah, just pull out! Let those wild and magical 30 seconds be remembered as a painting, not a baby. Pulling out. It's always, sometimes, maybe kind of effective. Always, sometimes. It's time for the Dick of the Week! Dick of the Week! Dick of the Week! 
Chris, who is our dick of the week? Dick of the week shout out goes to MC College in Winnipeg. MC College. Hey, go. Uh, they got this after school program or this extracurricular. It's just a drop in. Drop in? Yeah, it's a drop in on Thursdays. It's not even a regular class, it's just a drop just, in. It's a drop in Thursdays. Yeah, nice. Just drop in and with your daughter and learn how to style hair and make up and do other uh, extra things like that the ladies need to succeed in this world. Yeah, it's for the dads, it's right? For dads. It's like for dads to learn the little things, especially this. Imagine being a single dad and not raising a daughter. Yeah, right. And you don't want to you don't want to fuck them up. Dad up. No, so it's a lot riding like, on that. Having having an opportunity to go and learn some different ways to style their hair without messing it up, different makeup tips or techniques, techniques. or even def- they got fashion skill and fashion advice. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that's so so, so MC, MC College, College, you are the dick, dick of the week. week. That's a good thing. That's a totally good thing. <laughs> totally good thing. Uh, Chris, what did you learn this week about parenting? I learned that uh, to get a child rid of their soothers uh, and make it seem like their own idea instead of taking it away from them and making it a huge fight, you simply nip the tip with a bit of, with the scissors. Yeah, my wife this week uh, wanted to get Erica off the soothers finally. How and, old is Erica? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half, okay. So, we wanted to for more than six months now. Uh, around three months ago, she had like a sickness thing. She got really sick, and she wanted it as like her go to sleep and as a crutch, as a, a soother, right? And uh, Amanda and I finally had enough, and she just snipped the tip uh, at all three of these things, and Erica threw them away on her own. She's like, you're a big girl. You don't need them now. And she just hucked it out. So I learned that. Cut the tip. It's going to work. Get rid of the soother problem. <laughs> What did you learn this week, Jim? Nip that tip. Nip that Nip tip. That tip. Uh, I went to a lactation consultant class. <laughs> I think I see that at the carp fair. Yeah, oh, no? that's, that's where they're milking the cows. Yeah, so the cow, oh, it's like a lactation consultant yeah. cows. No, yeah. we went to, um, they, there was this event at the Pinecrest Queensway Community Health Center. I love the, how the community health centers in Ottawa, they are doing the baby-friendly initiative, which is pro-breastfeeding. Yep. Um, and they do free lactation consultants, uh, consultancies and classes. So they did a class one evening. Uh, there were about five couples that came. Uh, we, we talked about like the pros and the cons of breastfeeding, yeah. about latching and all that stuff. And then uh, the guys had to el- exit the room. And uh, I was promised boobs. Like, yeah, oh, like, Kate, you Kate, came for this course? Yeah, you, you no, 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 this is free. This, oh, is, free. this, this is, free. is why I like it, right? That's because like the community health centers want people... To know about the benefits, right? To, to not just know about the benefits of, of breastfeeding off the top, but to know about breastfeeding for six months or 12 months or, you know, like they talk about 24 months. And they also talk about what can you do if you can't breastfeed or, you know, like girls with inverted nipples where you can't get yeah, a latch, get right? Latch, like, yeah. like the different tools and techniques. They got a tool that goes on an inverted nipple oh. and it like suctions to the nipple so the baby can still suck it like a it's nipple. Like a and nipple sh- tap. Yeah, it's nice. like a nipple, nipple tap. tap. Nice. Nipple tap. Nipple like, tap. This is nipple tap. Yeah, like spot none associated with spinal tap at all. Um, and then we left, we left, and um, they went around and actually the girls were able to um, to work on Getting it because it's not doesn't start as milk. No, it's it's colostum. Colostum, right? Yeah. So, uh, so we got some colostum. So oh, wow. we're, we're also we're we're four weeks away from the baby yesterday, yeah, he, right? So yeah, like, yeah, that's uh, there's colostum. There's colostum there, there. Right? yeah, yeah. And uh, that they, stuff's really great in coffee. It's like T cell helper friendly. Woo! Best part in your cup. Is they they taught in us. Your cup. They taught us the massage, like the breast massage. Because like she's like, does anybody here uh, like? have any questions like before we move on and like I wanted to be like how do I massage her breasts to help? <laughs> yeah. How do I milk that titty? <laughs> well, I feel like I wanted to do that. But like, you know, I can get super hard and, yeah. and you know, you just gotta work it out. Yeah. So I am now an expert at breast massages. Another thing to put well, on the resume. You know, like I was a ten before. But yeah. now, now he's like, now I'm like yeah. eleven. Yeah, at least, at, at least, least eleven. He's eleven gonna, years old. Eleven years old. Eleven years old. Eleven years old. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's what we learned, and uh, we learned a lot from Rodney. Yeah, a lot from Rodney. You guys have been fantastic. Uh, well, I guess I can't say that. You, there's been zero engagement. Right? Yeah, zero. We're gonna say reach out to us on our socials for God's yeah, sake. That's please. how you can engage with us. <laughs> 
Yes. Yeah. Please don't call us in the middle of the night. That'd be a weird. Knock Here's with. Chris's number: six one three eight eight four. I was gonna say five five five. We were, I was gonna oh. go Hollywood on you. Oh, all five five five. Yeah, eight eight four is the value. Though. Come on now. Okay. Right. Well, five 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 is the Hollywood. Like, yeah. Don't call us number. KL five three two two six. That number again: KL five three two two six. One eight six six. Go Jerry. <laughs> Oh, Jerry. Jerry Springer. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, Jerry. <laughs> Ward actually had a great uh, tweet. He's like, I remember when the people on Jerry Springer went back to their uh, to their trailer parks, not to the White House. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. that. I saw was that. Hilarious. That was Ward Anderson, episode two. two. Check out his Amazon Prime special now. Yeah. Um, yeah, sort send of us an email. Up. Send us an email. We got daddy issues at gmail.com. Yeah. Uh, daddy issues at Champion Kingsbury on Facebook. Yes, we are on Facebook. Yes. We are. I think Facebook. We're, we're at like two hundred forty-five likes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If only we could get that many listeners. That's right. Uh, well, thank you for liking the page. Hey. On Twitter, you can engage with us at We Got Dad Issues. L- actually, seriously, let us know if you swear in front of your kids, or if you don't, or for whatever reason, fucking <laughs> fuck, fucking, <laughs> <laughs> fucking, 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 fucking. Shit. Uh, just, just hit us up on just Twitter. Up. Like, let's, let's, have let's, let's have a conversation. Like, okay. let's let's engage rather than just promote. That's right. That's uh, right. And then we're on Instagram. Uh, daddy issues with Champion Kingsbury as well. Oh no, we got daddy issues. Oh, we got daddy issues. Uh, we, right. got we got daddy, daddy issues, issues on Instagram. Sorry, I'm new to Insta. I yeah. started it just for you people, and now just he won't stop you. using it. I know it's weird. Um, and we're also on YouTube. Yes, iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Music in the states only. Sorry, Canada. Yeah, we don't know um, why that is, but. Uh, Spotify. Spotify. We're on Spotify. Yeah, I was you know, say Spotify. We're, we're wherever you get this. Yeah. All right. So listen up, rate us, like us, subscribe, share, comment, feedback. Don't be a dick about it. Just just give us love. We'll give you love. If you don't like us, tell us why. But tell us why in a constructive way. Don't make Matthew cry. You can go ahead and try your best. I'll read them. He'll forward them to me. I will. I will be like Chris. I can't handle this. <laughs> Sense of soul, guys. All right. Thank All right. You. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. Later. Daddy Issues with Champ and Kingsbury has been created by Matthew Champ and Chris Kingsbury. Edited and produced by Matthew Champ. With special notice and special thanks to Freddie J and Heather Hurst. And our special thanks to Rodney Ramsey. Um, yeah. <laughs> and our beer supporters this week. Well, not that they know that they're supporting us. <laughs> oh, they should. <laughs> Later days, peeps. Later